Gypsy Smith's Best Sermons, as delivered in Brooklyn and published in book form by arrangement with the Brooklyn Daily Eagle. Copyrighted 1907. This is the last chapter in the book, Chapter 21. Church Life in America, as seen by Gypsy Smith. At the request of the editor of the Congregationalists of Boston, Gypsy Smith, who had just closed his wonderful mission in Brooklyn, has written an article on, quote, Church Life in America, unquote. It speaks of the decline of the prayer meeting, the lessening church attendancy, and of some encouraging symptoms. The article follows. The prosperity of the nation has given the people the wherewithal to indulge the social side of life, and I am afraid this has been to such an extent as to injure, if not to kill, the spiritual life of many. On my first visit to America, 18 years ago, I was impressed with the fact that most church members were expected to go to the week night prayer meeting, and large numbers went because they wanted to do so, and seemed to enjoy going, for their spiritual life was fed and helped that way, and it was no uncommon thing to see half, if not two-thirds, of the church membership present at the week night prayer meeting. A great change has taken place. This is no longer the rule. It is far more difficult to get the people who call themselves Christians to prayer meeting. The prayer meeting is the life of the church. She stands or falls as she prays. The prayer meeting is the spiritual thermometer of every church. Let me see the weeknight prayer meeting of any church and feel its pulse. And I will gauge its life and tell you what it stands for in the community. The church exists for making Christians, the opening of blind eyes, unstopping deaf ears, turning men from darkness to light, and from the powers of Satan unto God. This can come forth by nothing but by prayer. One of the lost arts of the church is the power to pray, and the love of prayer for this alone can give passion for souls and keep passion alive. Another thing impresses me, the people in America do not go to church on Sunday, as they did. The first time General Booth came to America, he told us when he returned, the Americans were a church-going nation. It seems growing in fashion to go once a week now. Sons and daughters grow up with the idea and feeling deeply rooted in their hearts. There is not so much in religion after all. Mother and father think less of it. They have practically given it up. They only go to church once on Sunday, and not always as much as that. Along with these sad facts, there is the mad craze for pleasure, and I am speaking, of course, of the professed church member. The theater, the dance, and the cards have the right of way everywhere. I am told these be- beings are eating the life and soul out of the churches, killing all real hunger for God and the salvation of those we love. The people are moral, but not spiritual, refined, but not godly, ornamental in the church, but not useful. The evangelization of the world is not their business. The atmosphere of the church is educational and high-toned, but not convincing or converting. Pastors have told me that these things, many of them in tears, some of the them say they themselves may be partly to blame. Their preaching has been along the lines of the lectures on current topics, with the latest novel teaches, an evening with the poets or the higher critics, and they feel that their work has lacked the ringing, certain evangelical note, the dear old gospel of the cross, the only appeal to the conscience, the heart, the judgment, and the will. I do not say these are the sole causes, but they have tended that way. What is needed is a John the Baptist with his startling, piercing cry, Repent ye! Some Elijah with his commanding, overwhelming, dominating cry, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve! Some prophet of the Lord with his tongue of flame and his heart breaking with the patho of Calvary to lift the danger signal 
and with clear clarion tones cry, Thus saith the Lord. These are some things which have burned their way into my heart during the last months, and yet there are others which give me great hope. Everywhere pastors have received me as a brother. Beloved welcomed me and my message. Glad to have both and seemed hungry and thirsty for the old, old story. And they know it when they hear it. I never saw ministers anywhere in the world more desirous to see the churches revived and the people saved and more willing to follow a sane, wise, scriptural evangelism and they have been willing and glad to learn that there is no incompatibility with the high, highest culture and the most aggressive Christianity. For evangelism is the gospel of Calvary put into active operation, and I have yet to meet the first evangelical pastor in America to oppose my mes- message and my methods. How many have written or come to me telling that they will henceforth preach the cross as never before, and many, thank God, are doing this. They have discovered the crowds are not tired of the old, old story, and that nothing attracts like the cross, and I believe the pastors I have met are most anxious to adopt any method which will bring Christ and the crowds together in the ordinary work of the church. When those who are members of the churches will give themselves to humble confession of sin, for there is much to confess, backsliding of heart, lukewarmness, unbelief, love of ease, want of sympathy, self-indulgency and love of the world, confession which brings pardon and cleansing, it must be real. No plain at confession will do for God. When sin is put away, then we shall find the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. When this consecration shall take place, the church may rise from the dust, knowing the glory of the Lord has risen upon her, and she may go forth terribly as an army with banners, and she may, in the power of Pentecost, shake America to its very center. Surely the godless condition of those around us, the drink fins, the lust, the crowded divorce courts, the love of money, the intoxicating pleasure-loving spirit, the cold, formal, useless lives so many live who call themselves Christians demand that something be done at once to save the name and honor of our God. And I say to my brethren and their churches of this vast field, everything is in your hands. You love the gospel, preach it in its fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit. For he is given to every man that he may profit withal. The fields are white unto harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest may send forth laborers into the harvest. He sent them out two by two. It looks as though they began to pray, and he answered their prayer by sending them. Why should this not be so with you? There is an evangelist hidden in every honest pastor. Let him come forth. You say, I fear there is no evangelist in me. Well, at least there is, and ought to be, a laborer, and if you will only be faithful, God will take care you are fruitful. The end had been read by Peter John Parisis.